What's going on, folks? And we're back from our break. And joining us is Larry Vickers. And uh, before we went to break, we were kind of talking about um, some of the consulting that uh, you did in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of want to give us like a quick rundown of uh, some of the things that you've done in the industry from a consulting standpoint. Oh man, it's been a lot. And actually, <laughs> actually, after a while, I kind of lose track of it. Mm -hmm. um, started back, I was still in the army and went to HK to get, to essentially kick off what eventually became the HK 416. Okay. And the push behind that was to get a shorter 5.56 M4 style rifle that would function reliably with a barrel length under 14.5 inches. Okay. Um, that's a challenge in that gun because of the gas system. And that's where that came from. And then uh, that's been a big success. Now, um, I'm good. I'm, anybody who knows me or follows me knows I have this unbridled love affair with the 416. I don't know why. Oh, cool. I mean, for, for all intents and purposes, on the surface, it looks like every other AR. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't to me. <laughs> it's, but it just, uh, I, I've been trying to figure out why because, you know, there, there are a myriad of, of, of ARs that I love. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have the unique aspects of the gun in, in terms of the gas system. Um, and I don't know. I just I can't get over why I love that gun so much. And I was wondering well, if, you, if, if you could help me <laughs> explain well, to the thing, world. You know, it was specifically built for tier one special operations. Mm -hmm. That, of course, makes it a unique firearm. And then ultimately it was the gun used to kill bin Laden. So well, that yeah, makes yeah, always special. That. Yeah. I mean. That, that makes it a special gun, no matter what. Whether you like it or hate it or you're indifferent to it, uh -huh. it's a special firearm for that reason alone. Now, we'll, um, Go ahead. Sorry. It, here's my thing on it. It's a great gun if you have the requirement to have a shorter barrel length than 14 and a half inches mm -hmm. or you're in a position like the Marine Corps where you're going to be doing a lot of fully automatic fire. Mm -hmm. That piston system in the 416 has a lot of merit. Gotcha. If you're a guy that just goes out and, you know, an average guy and he shoots a 14 and a half or 16 inch gun, you know, it's recreational shooting. Kind of overkill. They really don't need it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And, 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 and for me, a lot of it is, is, is just a bunch of intangible stuff for why I like it and, you know, why I have it sure. set up the way that I do. I mean, um, I, I try to set it up as close as possible to the actual 416. Um, and for me, like I said, with more kind of sentimental aspects and kind of the second nature cool. Um, in terms of, you know, it being designed for a very specific reason, a specific purpose. Um, Absolutely. Now, with the, um, the M27, what, what were your thoughts on, on that in terms of it replacing? Um, well, here's, at first glance, I thought it was kind of misguided. But yeah. once I really kind of got read in on what it's about, and it's actually augmenting, the, the, the better term for it would be augmentation to the M249. Okay. And when you look at it from that perspective, it has some real merit. Would, okay. Um, Go a little bit deeper because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious myself because I couldn't really wrap my head around it initially. Right. Well, just like the M249 has capabilities that the M27 infantry automatic rifle doesn't, doesn't have, mm -hmm. the M27 has capabilities that the, the M249 doesn't, doesn't have. have. Okay. I mean, you have the ability to take a, a much more precise shot mm -hmm. for one. I mean, you have semi-automatic and fully automatic capability with it, obviously. Uh, and it's a much lighter gun to carry. So if you need a gun that provides some fully automatic capability with almost a DMR role, uh -huh. I mean, it's obviously done well. The Marines I've talked to that have used it are very pleased with it. They're very happy with it. I think a lot of people's first kind of step back is like from the fish from the sheer ability to put down a wall of fire yeah. more, more or less you know um you're running a belt fed gun versus a, a magazine right. um and what, what what would you say to people who are kind of like that makes absolutely no sense it's like you go from a belt fed gun where you can carry tons and tons and tons of rounds to something that's a little bit more limited well it, the marine corps obviously saw and i kind of get it they saw that there was a gap. It's like you got a guy with uh -huh. an M16 or an M4 and then you got with an M249, but you really don't have a guy that's in between. You don't have that guy that can take the precise shot. Also, guys working in you know urban areas or real tight spaces, gotcha. um, an M249's overkill, it's a much heavier gun, it's a much bulkier gun. So they, they felt like there was a capabilities gap that, that the M27 brings to the table. Awesome, awesome. So, um, were you also involved with the uh, development of the HK-45? Yeah, I sure was. Okay. What it was, where that started was, 
back in the day, I had talked to HK about making a 1911. About uh-huh. hey, you know, I felt like they could make one and make some changes and do this and do that. It never made it off paper. Okay, I'll be I'll be honest with you. Um, and I, it would have been a good gun, but it would have been an expensive gun. I mean, an all steel made HK German 1911 would have been a very expensive gun. Okay. So, but I started looking at it and I was talking to my good friend, Ken Hackathorn. And I said, why don't we look kind of in their wheelhouse and look at, at them tweaking products they have or kind of modifying some stuff and kind of bringing an enhanced 45 ACP pistol out on the market that kind of you know, fills that niche. Uh-huh. So that's where the HK 45 came from. It's kind of, honestly, it's a blend of the USP mm-hmm. and the P 2000. The yeah, HK absolutely. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Okay. I actually run for my home defense pistol. It's an HK 45 tactical. Um, I'm, I'm right now I'm thinking about going back down to the HK 45 C and, and mm-hmm. fitting it with a suppressor. Um, from your just personal opinion, from a home defense standpoint, do you think that's a good home defense pistol setup? Oh, sure. I, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. The HK-45 is a superb 45 ACP pistol. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is their outstanding guns. I'm fans of them. Uh-huh. I tell everybody, for a full-size, duty-grade, out-of-the-box 45 ACP pistol, man, yeah. they are hard to beat. Yeah, no, They're I, super I, accurate, as mm-hmm. I'm sure you know. Yep. And they're super reliable. They're good guns, man. They're really good guns. Yeah, I love mine to death, which is why you know it sits next to me right by the bed every night. Um, so, what what other guns that um, have you been intricately a part of in terms of develop in terms of development that I'm not aware of? Well, you know, I've been I've given input all over the place. Uh-huh. You know, at different times, helping people like my friends at Wilson Combat and whatnot. The the pistol the weapons now would have to be really the the Glocks from Lipsy's and what that once again is resurrecting a pistol the, with the RTF2 frame uh-huh. resurrecting a pistol that has kind of history kind of left it by and then bringing my parts that I you know I've done with Tango down in it and kind of bringing that to the market where it, once again you know there's a lot of Glock pistols on the market uh-huh. but I felt like there there wasn't one that really hit the nail on the head. And in the art, the Vickers, you know, Glocks from from Lipsy's have been a home run. Yeah. So that would be the gun now, or the guns now that really you would have to say come, you know, to the forefront. Because I um I remember when I went to um I went to a gun store in Houston about I want to say about a year ago, maybe seven eight months ago, and um I saw one of your guns there, and I've always been a avid fan of the RTF Glocks. I, mm-hmm. I always said if I was ever have to do anything where I had to, where I needed a duty gun. Um, I would definitely run to the RTF because it just the feel with the whatever texturing they did on that on that on that grip, it just works perfectly. So mm-hmm. why why did you decide to go and um, do what you did from a customization standpoint off of that plat- off the RTF platform versus the other? Well, the, because here's why the RTF two was was for some people actually had too much bite. Yeah. Well, that's easy to take some sandpaper and, run and dull it down. It's much more difficult to take a gun that's too slick and, and make it. Yeah, I mean, it requires some custom stippling. The thing that Glock really, in my opinion, missed the boat on. Um, never been a fan of those fish scallops. See, I love the fish. Right I love those. <laughs> See, they, they didn't work, they but, cool, but <laughs> yeah, they're not very functional. Exactly. No, you're, you're totally so, right. Yeah, they look cool, but they're not very functional. So my thing is, let's bring this gun back and let's give it straight grasping grooves. Um, and it's been a home run. Amazingly enough, and I knew this was going to happen, but there's people who actually think that I came up with the RTF2 frame. There's people, <laughs> there are, I run into them. There's people that think they don't. They're unaware of the fact that that frame existed our, before my Lipsy's guns. I, t- t- truth be told, I would just run with it. You know, <laughs> here's the thing: we got like fifteen thousand of them out there now. So, Jeez. truth be told, there's probably now more Vickers RTF2s than, than actual. Rich. Yeah, no, I mean, and the thing about it is, you 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 kind of brought it back from life yeah. because a lot of people didn't really know about the RTF2s. I know about them because I was chasing them down for for a period. I think my yeah. very first Glock 19 was a Glock 19 RTF2. Um, I have yep. an old video where I was kind of talking about it. And for me, it was kind of like, oh, crap. The, what was new to me was the actual change in the color of the frame. Um, yeah. But, yeah, for a lot of people who are just kind of really getting into it, they're like, oh, this is really cool. So I, I would just, you know, I'd run with the, the whole, you know. I mean, nothing wrong with taking a little bit of yeah, You know how the Internet and everything, I, I could go out and put a big banner up and 
deny it, but it wouldn't matter. I mean, there'd be problems. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Well, we're going to take another quick break, and um, when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit of gun porn. Sounds good. All right. 